Hey guys, it's Tina here. Welcome back to another episode of Tina Tries It. Now, there's a few things in life that I'm absolutely obsessed with. Beauty, as you know, is one of them. But I also really enjoy watching how things are made. Like literally, I can spend hours on YouTube watching how random things are made. I find it so interesting and oddly satisfying. Anyone else the same? Now, when Alfred and I first moved to Singapore, the first friend we made here, his name is Jamie, he happened to own a candy lab called Sticky Candy. They specialize in making personalized candy, which you can fully customize. You can choose like the different designs that go inside it and then the different colors as well as the flavor. And so I asked Jamie if I could tag along with him to work one day and if I can actually make my very own candy. And so that's what we're doing today. You don't understand how excited I am. Before I actually start making the candy, I need to figure out what my design is going to be. There are a couple of elements involved in designing the candy. First, I'll need to decide on a logo or symbol to have in the center of my candy, along with the text and color to go with it. Then I'll need to choose the colors I want for the outside and if I want pinstripes. In terms of the pattern of the casing, there's a couple options I have. I could choose a solid block of color or half and half, or I can have it with stripes. There's four stripes, six stripes, and lots of stripes. Then of course, I'll need to decide on the flavor of my candy. For my design, I've opted for a red heart in the center with my name at the bottom. For the outside, I'll have a combination of red, pink, and white stripes. And for my flavor, I'm going to have to go with watermelon. Once I decided on my design, it was time to get my hands sticky. Well, actually, not really. I have to wear gloves because it's really hot and I would literally burn my skin if I touched it with my bare hands. So first off, all the main ingredients are boiled in this huge pot. Inside, there's sugar, water, glucose, and the watermelon flavoring. So this is boiled for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then the mixture is poured onto a cooling table. FYI, candy making is pretty dangerous because you're dealing with a very, very hot mixture. You could easily burn yourself if you're not careful. Thankfully, I had special gloves to protect my hands and my first task was to pour in the liquid color into the candy mixture. So here I've got the red coloring and I'm just pouring that into the mixture and it is sizzling because it's so hot. And I'm just mixing that in with a spatula Then I moved on to the pink color. Next to me, SK was pouring in the white. We had to do it together because you have to work really fast because you don't want the mixture to cool down completely and you want to be able to mix that coloring in really evenly. After that, I separated each section using scissors. And then we use our spatulas to mix the color in. Next up, it is time to stretch the candy. I've seen this done a couple of times on YouTube and honestly, it didn't look that hard until I actually tried it. For this, I had to put on another extra layer of gloves. 
And basically what I had to do was stretch the candy over the hook, wrap it back around the hook and keep going. And I think you do this for like, I don't know, like 100, 200 times, something crazy like that. It was super hard to do because the mixture was really hot and really heavy. I think there's about like four kilos there or something. I was just trying really hard not to drop the candy. My arm started to get really tired and so I just let SK finish it off. And he was a complete show off, okay, like he made it look so easy. Once the candy was stretched, we were ready to move on to assembling the design. So the red part is going to be for the letters in the center of my design, as well as the love heart. This part was also kind of difficult, and so I just supervised while the guys assembled my design. Can I just say, these guys worked so fast and at one point I felt very useless. I was just like, all right, twiddling my thumbs. What should I do now? I have no jobs here. Really? I'm just supervising. That's my job in this, uh, in this section. Then the design elements are wrapped in a layer of the white candy. Once all the heavy lifting was done, I was brought back in to roll and smooth out the candy. A very important job. I might add. Whilst I'm rolling my giant sausage candy, SK is assembling the outer casing where the stripes are going to be. So basically he creates this like big blanket to wrap my white sausage in 
And then my job was to carefully carry my candy baby onto its blanket. So now we pretty much have like a giant version of my candy and we need to downsize it so that involves a little bit of stretching. I pretty much had to choke the end of my candy baby. And then pull it out to create a thin cylinder. And so that actually shrinks my design down and it ends up looking like this. Now rolling all that candy out, you have to work really, really fast. And so I got demoted. I was put at the end of the line and I just had to roll my big lump of candy whilst the guys stretched the rest out. And what we end up with are these long, thin cylinders of my candy, which needed to be rolled out so when they cool down, they're in a straight form, so it's easier to cut them up. Once all the candy was thinned out and I was left with these rods, it was time to cut them up. To chop them, what I had to do was lean the candy rod at a 45 degree angle onto this metal block and use my spatula to slowly chop the candy. I didn't really need much force at all. It was actually fairly easy to do. However, I was really slow. It was going to take me all day to cut all this candy up, but thankfully, we had some professionals on hand to help. This is the one that the, the professionals made, and this is my one. Now it is time for the moment of truth, a taste test. Watermelon flavor, can't go wrong. Cutting the candy was so much fun that everyone else wanted to have a go. In the end, I had made my very own batch of candy. It was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be, so I have major respect for Jamie and his team because they do that every day and they're dealing with like a heavy, hot boiling mixture of candy, which is actually quite dangerous. Not only was that a really fun, amazing experience, I also got to take home some candy. This is officially my Tina Tries It Sticky Edition candy. Now, I definitely need some help devouring some of these candies, because if I did, I would probably get diabetes after. So, I will be giving away six of these candy jars filled with Tina Tries It candy made by yours truly. Please note, not all of them are made equal. Some of them are a little bit fatter than others, but I can guarantee that they taste extremely yummy. So if you want a chance to win one of these candy jars, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Tina underscore Yong, and comment below and let me know if you could try anything in the world, what would it be? I can safely say candy making is ticked off my list. 
Anyways, let me know if you enjoyed this video. I know it's not my regular beauty makeup content, but I really want to expand my Tina Tries It series just to include other interests that I have. That is all from me. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I shall speak to you guys next time. Bye!